What's going on guys? Today we are going to be making casein gesso from readily available materials. To properly make gesso you're going to need an adhesive or a binder, a filler for volume, texture, and tooth, and optionally you can add pigment to color your gesso. For our binder we are going to be using casein. If you do not know what casein is, it is a powerful protein binder found within milk. We're going to extract the casein from this fat-free milk and combine it with two different fillers for our experiment. So the recipe goes two cups of vinegar to one gallon of skim milk. For the best yield results, don't stir the mixture much, if at all. The casein separates from the whey very fast within a couple of hours, but for best results, wait 24 hours. And the milk and mixture itself must be at room temperature. Whole gallon. Whole thing, right in there, right in there. Two cups of vinegar. Don't stir it, stir it with the mixture. Whee, there we go, get in there. Once you've combined the vinegar and milk and given the casein time to separate from the whey, this is what it's gonna look like. Very much like cheese. YouTube, it's honestly weird that you're in my kitchen. Now that the casein has separated from the whey, I'm going to strain it. Now you're gonna need more than just a metal strainer. You're gonna need some cheesecloth. My store was out of cheesecloth, so I bought these reusable cotton handy wipes, and they work just as well. We need to wash the casein until it doesn't smell anymore. That way it ensures that it becomes more pH neutral, less susceptible to mold and rot, and infection by insects, which are all very real possibilities. My experiment started off by breaking up my recipes into fractions to find the best ratio. The plaster recipe had a two parts to two parts to one part ratio, and my talc recipe had a one to two parts to one part ratio. Once I have mixed my testing ratios, I'll apply the different batches to pre-sanded plywood boards. I'll have three boards for my plaster gesso, three boards for my talc gesso, and one extra board for an acrylic ground gesso for my control. Although this gesso and typically gesso should not be applied to canvas, I'm going to put a layer of each batch on this piece of cotton duct in order to test the flexibility of my fillers try to play games where I get white people to say really white words like tennis. To give you some scale, I gessoed all of these panels with only half of the casein of one gallon and I still have all this gesso left over. Hey guys, it's the morning. My gesso has been drying for 12 hours now and it has turned into this opaque white. Uh, these are my talc panels, these are my plaster panels, this is my canvas to test flexibility, and these panels are a combination of both talc and plaster, which worked out really, really well. Casein dries very similarly to acrylic paint, so to follow the same rules as acrylics, I'm going to wait at least 24 hours until I paint on top of them. As an update on my cotton duct flexibility test, although my experiment is skewed, contrary to what I would believe with the plaster having excess casein in the recipe, the plaster is actually more flexible than the talc. The talc is just way too brittle. Now I couldn't find a consistent casein gesso recipe online, so I really needed to experiment on my own. It's been about three days now and my panels have completely dried. Here is one of my talc panels and here are two of my plaster panels. My plaster panels cracked dramatically, whereas my talc panels didn't crack at all. Okay, most likely the reason why my plaster panels cracked as dramatically as they did was due to an excess of adhesion. I used too much casein. I used about twice as much casein in this recipe as I did with my talc recipe. So now I'm going to change my recipe, combine them, use half the amount of casein with some plaster. We're back in the kitchen to refine our recipe. 
This is the recipe I suggest that we use. We're going to add two cups of plaster to a saucepan with one cup of water. Mix it up while on medium heat. It makes a good transition for the casein. Now add one cup of casein and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Mix everything with a whisk and add more water if needed. It's best if the gesso is blended finely, so I suggest using a blender. After that, let the gesso cool so it doesn't crack or bubble once you apply it. This stuff is like cement, you have to keep it mixed. Now I'm using a $1 sponge brush for a smooth finish. At first, casein goes on transparently, but eventually, as it dries, it will turn an opaque white. This recipe worked out very well. There are no bubbles nor cracks, and there are a couple of bumps, but that can be buffed out with some fine sandpaper. I only put on two coats under this, and it's mostly covered all of the wood grain. So I think this is a good basis for a recipe. Before I go into reviewing my gesso, I'm going to talk about why I made this stuff in the first place. Basically, I had a problem. In recent history, acrylic ground oil paintings aren't proving to be archival. A couple of them have been flaking off and showing signs of cracking. and you have to remember that acrylic paints aren't that old. They're only about 60 years old, and 60 years for a painting is pretty young. And the reason behind that is that acrylic ground doesn't chemically bond to oil paints. So to basically explain that, all synthetic adhesives used today are not protein-based. Uh, they have kinetic bonds, they don't have chemical bonds. Um, and this is not to scare you, I feel like uh, if you have an acrylic ground and it has some tooth to it, you're going to be fine. To explain that, all synthetic adhesives used today are not protein based, which means that their bonds are kinetic bonds and not chemical bonds. That includes acrylic polymer, used in acrylic gesso. Historically speaking, before acrylic gesso, we used to use animal based glues to adhere to our oil paints. These glues, usually being made out of animal skin, were naturally protein-based, which means they would chemically bond to the fatty acids within our oil paints. However, I found an example of a painting that has held up very well. It's 500 years old, and there's something special about this painting. Its gesso ground is cheese-based, which has to be casein. So there was my end goal, create a protein-based gesso that it would be archival, and that I could make it with materials that were readily available to me. I could get them in a day, I could make this whole recipe in a day. So now on to the review. I painted a couple of portraits on my casein gesso, and it feels wonderful. Because it chemically combines with my oil paints, I can sand it smooth, I don't have to worry about texture, uh, I can feel it absorb inside of the gesso, and that could be just because it's has plaster in it, but it feels good. Um, and this video is not to scare you. Um, I'm in no way going to stop using acrylic gesso over this stuff. Uh, acrylic gesso has its uses, this has its downsides, and vice versa. Bam, I changed clothes. YouTube, I wanted to talk to you as if an artist would talk to another artist. Uh, you should question whether or not you care. Um, then there's nothing wrong with that. The, like, I don't know if this stuff is going to last 500 years. I really don't. I want to be totally honest with you. I really like it. There's a potential for it. I believe there is a potential for that. However, there's so many things that could go wrong. Uh, and maybe acrylic gesso grounds have gotten more advanced in the 60 years that they've been around. Maybe they're better now. Uh, we don't know. Only time can tell. 
and you gotta question whether or not you just want to paint. There's nothing wrong with that. If you just don't care, you don't want to spend all this time making gesso and making canvases, you just want to paint. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and you have to decide that uh, when you're an artist. Uh, the other point I wanted to make, uh, a couple of things, is you can only store this stuff for two days at max. Um, I needed to tell you that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I think that you should try this stuff. Uh, it feels really nice to me. I've given my professional artist teachers this stuff. I've handed it to them. They've really liked it. I was very proud that they liked it. it was, I was very surprised too. Um, so that's all I can give you, YouTube. Um, if you want to ask me any questions about this stuff, feel free. Uh, all my links to all social media will be down in the description. The other thing that will be down in the description is a paper I'm going to write. If you don't see it, nag me about it. Um, it's going to have the recipe along with all my links and sources and research, um, everything you're going to need and everything I've found out. Uh, and if you learned something YouTube, giving this video a like would really help me out. And if you want to keep updated with me on YouTube, just subscribe. And thank you for watching YouTube. It's awesome. You're awesome. And I'll see you later. Are you ready for science?